Bodhi Shaman is basically a all-in-one flasher that has been written by somebody. Uh, I don't know exactly who, Bodhi Shah, uh, but it is very comprehensive. As well, there's a lot of information here that's very useful about your specific card. So the H710 is an internal HBA. And so that means it's going to have two SAS connectors on it. The H810 is an external HBA, so it's going to have two external connectors on it. And the H310 is kind of the entry level, not a bad performer if you flash it, but a pretty bad performer if you don't flash it. So we're getting ready to flash our H710. Make sure you remove the battery. The battery will be kind of down here in this position and it'll have a little plug here. So make sure you remove this before you flash it. Also, you know, of course, unplug your HBA cables from it before you flash it also. You only want to have one HBA in a machine as you're flashing it at a time. So I'm actually just gonna pop this one out real quick here. And then I'm gonna install this HBA over here. But that's an internal card. How could I connect it to a bunch of other cards out there? So there are a ton of different types of SAS based connectors out there. And so a real quick primer on them. This is an 8088 to an 8088. So this is for external connections. They've got nice little teeth that latch on them. To unlatch it, you just kind of pull back. To slide it, you just kind of pop it in until it latches. And so this would be useful for connecting. Like I have an external tape library. Um, I know people have been asking me about disc shelves and like, you know, what would you use for a disc shelf? So you can use these to connect to disc shelves from an external HBA. I'll link below to some disc shelf ideas for some 24 bay uh, disc shelves out there that are still pretty reasonable. They also make internal connectors for your SAS. So like one would connect to the HBA, then that the other one would connect to the back plane. And so this is an 8087 to 8087. This is gonna per plug into your H710, this into the back plane. And then there's a lot of other cool hybrid cables that they make also. So this one is in particular useful. This is a 8088 to 8087. And this one goes like it's super long. So keep in mind when you're buying them, the links of them, because you, you want to be able to have the reach if you're going to use like this, for instance, went for a pretty long reach. So I was reaching from an external SAS connector all the way to the back plane, one of the black back planes of the T620 with this. And in this generation, these are the typical kind of connectors that you're going to see. So if you're dealing with an H310, most of the LSI cards that are compatible here, and also, of course, the H710 and H810, these are likely what you're going to be dealing with. That'll get you like most of the way on your journey to what you need to do to interconnect your SAS. So let's go ahead. Let's start the process of flashing our USB to stick. So if you start up here, you can go down and in the introduction, you'll see that there's a eight Dell Perk flashing guide zip. Just click that, download that. And then we're gonna grab Rufus from up here. Rufus is a like USB flasher if you're not familiar with it. And that cable's already bad. So don't worry about the cat destroying it. That cable is bad. That's why I bought that one out because the cat will not leave me alone at all. So I, I figured it was gonna do that actually. I knew, I knew. So we'll, we're gonna go ahead and select this, <laughs> go up here to the desktop and uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. so we've got our perk cross flash and so if you go inside here, you're gonna see that there's two ISOs. So if you have a Dell computer that is a server and it has iDRAC on it, for instance, you can actually connect virtual media and just mount this ISO directly so you don't have to burn a, a USB. Now, if you are burning a USB, you almost kinda of need to burn two USBs, to be honest with you. You need one for each of these. So you can use the same one and just come back and reburn it and then plug it in and then come back and reburn it and then plug it in. But the first one that we're going to do here is you need to be able to run the free DOS boot disk. So we're going to burn this one first and then we'll be back. So just click that and then click start. Don't click anything else. Uh, if it asks you whether you want to write it in ISO mode or DD image mode, just leave it as ISO mode. Click right. It'll destroy whatever was on there. So make sure you don't have anything important on there. So I'm going to go plug that in. 
turn on the server remotely here, and then we'll go through the process. Now, I'm doing it on a server. You can do this on a desktop also. You can do this on almost any computer. There may be the need to tape some pins. I don't think you need to do that with this guide. I've not ran into it since Tech Matter uh, guides, which were several years ago that I was using. I'm not gonna run you through those because those you can mess it up pretty easy. This is pretty hard to mess it up. So as long as you follow along, we've got the BIOS boot disk inserted, the USB drive, go to BIOS boot menu here. Now there is a UEFI compatible version, but I would rather just go with the BIOS for all of the stuff that you're doing here. So another thing to keep in mind, do you need to boot from any of the drives that you're connecting to this? If you do, then you might have a problem. So don't flash an HBA if you need to connect to the drives to boot from because you won't be able to access it. There are some extra steps you can take to get it loaded to where you can select the bootable drive from it. I've never done that and so I won't be able to help you. So do that completely at your own risk. Okay, so we've got the disk loaded in and booted up there. And so at this prompt, go ahead and type in info. All right. So you'll see that SAS address there, and this is a BO revision card. So I have a I have two H710s. One's a B0, one's a D0. It's important that I especially don't get these mixed up, and it's also important that you kind of know which one you've got because one of these, the B0, is technically not quite as good as the D0 because it will not connect at Gen 3 PCIe speed. The SAS address is, man, you gotta go over there or something. The SAS address is something that you absolutely have to have. Uh, if you don't have it, you probably can make something up. Uh, I believe there is even a SAS address generator out there. Or you can copy somebody else's SAS address. As long as the same SAS address is not living inside the system on multiple cards, should be fine. Uh, so if for some reason things get all wonky over there, Hit me up, I'll send you my SAS address. Um, but the B0 is a PCIe two speed card. The D is technically capable of connecting at PCIe three speeds, which of course you want. So we are on the H710 B0 full size card. So make sure you go to the specific instruction set for your card. The next step here that we've got to do is we've got to type big B0 CRS. Hit enter and it'll confirm that you know which card revision you have. And you have to know whether you have a B0 or a D1 for this to uh, not mess things up. So it'll, it'll ask you along the way. So we will go ahead and flash this and it will do the entire process. Uh, this really takes a lot of burden off of you as the person operating it. You just have to make sure you know what card you have and you're good to go. All right, so now that that's done, <clears throat> we're gonna reboot into the Linux. Uh, so for this one, I'm not gonna actually burn it since I've got the nice you know, virtual media that I can map here on the Dell T620. So I've already mapped that and you can see that I've got like a, essentially a CD DVD drive that's mapped up here. Um, and then it'll ask us to press the enter key a couple more times maybe. All right and no issues so we will reboot and just type in reboot and then this next time i'm going to boot from that dvd you're going to need to either reburn the linux iso to your usb drive or burn a physical disk that you can do that also and use that for this uh, to boot off of as well make sure that if for some reason you have sr iov global and ioat dma engine Make sure that you have those disabled. Which card did I buy? And it came up with this model number. And it's like, if you see that model number, that is also, and I'll link that below here as well. That is a, a Gen 3 card. So that one will link up at Gen 3 speeds. If you see the, um, if you see the NHD8V, which I will not link below, that is a Gen 2 card. That's the one that we're actually flashing here, the B0 card. And just go through the top, just hit enter as soon as it starts up and it'll automatically boot up. Now, this part here about where you're in Linux, so technically you're booting into a Linux live operating system. 
he recommends SSH SSHing into the computer so that you can copy paste. Uh, as long as you're careful typing, you should be okay. So you can do this uh, two ways. You can follow these instructions here. I'm not gonna do that because I feel conf confident not mistyping something. Okay, so we need to enter root. So we'll just sudo su hyphen you're now root. And so here we go with the command that's capital B zero hyphen H710. Just let it go through all of its commands. And if you've done this before, so much easier, so much easier. Now after this, we'll reboot. It may or may not halt. Actually, it doesn't halt for me. He warns that it will halt, and it's odd because my iDrax don't halt. But it may halt, it may not halt for you. If it does, just do a physical reboot of your system, and then you should be good. Okay, so you can see it identified here is the LSI Logic SAS 2308, and the revision of, on the board is the B0. So it's just queried it, and it's found that information. So. The good news is we have made all the correct decisions that we need to for flashing because it is indeed the B0 card. I was a little bit concerned because I did not find information. I had to do a bunch of detective work because I pulled out the two cards. He lists a couple model numbers and I'm going to definitely submit these model numbers to him as well so he can get that information and maybe incorporate that into his guide because these are model numbers I could not find definitively whether they were the Gen 3 or the non-Gen 3. Also, whether they're the B0 or the D1. And if you flash the wrong one, you break your card. There we go. Now we need to just go ahead and reboot. It'll tell you that you can, you know, set the SAS address. Don't do that yet. Just reboot. And then when it boots back up, we'll set the SAS address. We're going to boot again from the Linux Live disk. And so one thing you might be considering, I know several people were looking and asking about what kind of disk arrays or disk shelves they might be able to get. So if you got an external card with a, like say H810 or something like that, flash it over to an LSI mode or just get an LSI card that is already an external HBA, the NIT mode. You can also buy those. Links for all those below. You could connect two by four, so you would have eight expansions. Each one of those expansions could plug into one of these, and each one of these is actually technically capable of daisy chaining out the SAS connections from it. Although I don't think you'd want to do that, but you can buy a one to four 8087 to four 8087s and plug in four of these, and then you would have, of course, uh, 96 drives that you'd be able to store. I believe that these are 4U units. So um, yeah, that would take up a bit of space. That's 16 U's of space right there. These do not come with the shelves. And so if you were putting them in a rack, you would want to get the rails and you'd also want to make sure, well, regardless, you want to make sure that you get the trays. The trays for these look like they're pretty darn cheap compared to like Dell trays, which are like almost six bucks or so uh, per tray. Like I've got a carton of trays because like they're ridiculously expensive. And I live in Austin, which is like Dell's headquarters, so people sell Dell stuff here like crazy cheap all the time. Um, <laughs> virtual CD-ROM. But yeah, that would be one disk shelf idea that would work out and allow you to grow your, your Chia farm in a pretty expandable fashion. I don't know how much power these use, but that probably would fit inside a 20 uh, amp uh, power envelope, but anytime you do this kind of stuff with server grade hardware, honestly, you should consider conditioned power because conditioned power is something that will prevent you from having issues that damage your hardware. So a like 2U UPS, and maybe I even put together a like half rack Visio diagram of like what it would look like with, so if you do two 2U, so that's four, and then you had another 2U for a storage controller, six so 18 24. so yeah i think i think four is a better yeah four is the number that i was coming up with in my head for how many would fit in a half rack easily okay so now we're going to set the sas address so that picture that you took eight bb 
zero zero zero. I hope. And by the way, feel free to use that. Did it work? <clears throat> Okay, now type info, and it appears that it did set the SAS address here, and we've got the rest of our information here. It's now a SAS 92058E that it's being reported as. However, 8E is confusing because that would indicate to me that it is an external card, and it's not. It's an internal card. So SAS 2308, that seems to be, if you look it up, what you can find it under, SAS 9205. Uh, you can see that also. If you're in Windows, uh, you probably will see SAS 9205 show up, which is like Mustang. SAS 2308 is like Falcon or something like that for their code names. Uh, but probably the most important thing that you can see here is that we are in IT mode. So that is the important thing. So again, you can't boot from your drives that are connected to this. So if you're connecting a drive to this to boot from, it's not going to work. Uh, so don't do that. There are some ways around that, but I'm not going to go into them here because lots of errors can happen. If you want to read further on the guide, it will tell you how to overcome those right down here at the bottom. So there are ways around them. If you get to this step and you feel like you need to rewind things and turn it back into the original Dell card, just go back, boot through the free DOS image and do big B0 RVT, and it will revert automatically all the way back to a Dell card. You do need to, after you've done that, plug your battery back in. So there we are. So we are ready to have our HBA operate in IT mode. I'm gonna go plug back in the SAS cables and we're done here. If you have questions, sound off below. If you have comments, sound off below. Check us out on our subreddit, which is our digital spaceport at digitalspaceport.com. If you are in the Twitterverse, feel free to hit us up at GoSpaceport, and we will see you guys later.